chapter three, uh, selecting a gear lock and modifying the uh, gear lock stats. First of all, if you selected greenhorn mode or you selected casual mode, you're going to be prompted with a message saying each gear lock may now gain one training point of their choice. Uh, so that's a free training point even before the, the game even begins. In general, by the way, messages from the program are going to be are going to appear in this box at the top of the screen. Uh, generally speaking, in the color of the current gear lock, but not always. That's not always the case. Sometimes just in a neutral color. Most of these messages are going to display for a series of a number of seconds. You can always close the current message simply by clicking on it and the message will go away. If you want to go back and view uh, one of the last 10 messages, you can simply click the last message button repeatedly until you get back to the message that you want to uh, view again. So get, if I click last message, as I just did, here's that message again, this time in the color of patches. Each gear lock may now gain one training point of their choice. Uh, I'm not going to worry about actually playing the game right now. I'm just demonstrating the uh, different uh, aspects of the uh, aspects of my program. Now, if you're playing a game involving multiple gear locks, you're going to see these option buttons up here in the corner, where you simply click to select the gear lock you wish to view. We're currently looking at patches. We can click on Boomer, Picket, Tantrum, whatever the case may be. Uh, alternatively, if you want to use your keyboard, you can hit the Accent Grav key, the key to the left of the number one and below the, normally below the Escape key on your keyboard. It's the same key that shares the tilde. If you click that, if you tap that key, that will advance to the next gear lock. If you can hold down Control and tap that same key, it will just go back to, uh, go back in reverse order, selecting gear locks as you uh, go. Uh, so, two different ways of selecting a gear lock. All right, so uh, if you selected Greenhorn mode, you'll see that every gear lock has a, 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 an automatic plus two on their health stat. You see that on all four of these gear locks here. Uh, if you selected Casual mode, I think you get a plus one on your health stat. And uh, in general, to increase a stat, you right click it. Again, that standard method methodology I was talking about uh, in my last video. Right click a box that contains a value to increase that value. Left click a box uh, that contains a value to decrease that value. By and large, that will work for most boxes. You'll get the hang of it. And normally there'll be a tool tip, as you see here, that uh, reminds you of that. Right click to increase the stat, left click to uh, decrease the stats. So if I right click here, I now have a dexterity of three. If I right click again, I now have dexterity of four. Of course, each one of these is going to require a training point uh, in the course of playing the game. If you decide to change your mind and want to go back, you simply left click to decrease the stat. And uh, 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 so left click to decrease, right click to increase the stat. Now, as you know from the rules of the game, if you want to increase your attack stat, or your defense stat, you first have to succeed at a training attempt by rolling the number of dice currently allocated for that uh, stat. In, the ca in this case, one die for attack or one die for defense. And uh, if you get a bone uh, when you roll for your attack training attempt, then you fail. If you roll a bone when training for your defense uh, uh, training attempt, then you get to re-roll a bone, all, all the bones one time and then if you don't have any bones, you succeed at gaining that training stat. The, um, all the rolling of dice happens here at the bottom of the prep area of, of, the, uh, of the gear lock player mat. Now you've got uh, an, a, gener a generic normal attack die here and a, a generic defense die here. If you left click on either one of these uh, icons, then you will add one die to the dexterity slot, if you will, the rolling area of, of the player mat here in this, in this box. So if I left click here, I now have, I'm now rolling one uh, die. If I, if I right click on one of these uh, uh, icons, then I will add two dice. So if I right click on the attack die icon now, I'll add another two attack dice. 
and that and the same applies to the fence die. One a left click gets you one, a right click gets you two more, and so forth and so on. So using that technique, you can gain as many dice as you want to roll. If you want to get rid of a die, simply right click it from this area here. So I can right click on any of these dice to uh, reduce the number of attack and defense dice that uh, I, I want to roll. So getting back to my original point, if I want to gain, let's say, plus one on my attack stat, I would first have to get rid of the, um, I would have to select one attack die, roll it, Make sure I don't get a bone. If I don't get a bone, I've now success, succeeded at the training attempt, and I can gain my uh, stat. As you see, anytime you do an increase in a, a d attack or defense stat, it, the program will remind you to make sure that you didn't forget to do a training attempt. Same in the case of defense. If I uh, add a defensive die and get rid of that attack die and roll that, I got a one, which means I succeeded at the attempt. If I got a bone, then I would have to roll again to make sure that uh, I, uh, uh, I didn't get a bone after one reroll of all bones. Uh, so for example, let's say I increased my defense stat uh, by one, and now I'm at two. Now the next time I want to try a t training attempt, I have to roll two defense dice. Uh, so let me roll those. This time I got double bone, which means I would have to re-roll both dice. Uh, and here I failed because after one re-roll, I, um, uh, I, uh, I didn't get uh, all non-bones results. Let's say this was the result of my first roll, and I needed to re-roll this die to see if I could get rid of that bone. In that case, I can double-click on this uh, die right here and that will put a little blue dot in the corner meaning it's now held that dice that die is frozen so now when I roll it's not going to roll that die it's only going to roll the dice that are not held so if I roll again this time I succeeded on the second re on the re-roll so I would have been uh, eligible to increase my stat now to three uh, to two for a total of three defensive dice. Uh, double click, of course, to uh, get rid of the hold icon. That simply toggles it back and forth. Toggle hold button simply unholds held dice and holds unheld dice. So it'll sim simply flip flop between dice that are held or dice that are not held. Uh, if you want to simply clear all dice from the rolling area, simply hit the clear button. Uh, now, uh, another standard methodology used throughout the program, if you control left click on a die, so if I point here, say at this die here, this attack die, if I control click it, I will see all six faces of this die. And if I hover over uh, uh, one of these uh, die faces, it will uh, Again, give me a tooltip as, uh, as to what I can do then. Uh, now, if I uh, clicking on a 1 is not going to change the value, but if I point at 2, it's going to say left click to change. So if I click on this, I now made this die a 2. Now, of course, dice in this area are normally rolls. So you, norm you wouldn't normally change those dice. Uh, but that's a, that's a, general, a general way to, to view dice and to change them um, uh, should that be, should the program permit that. Uh, same goes true down here. If I uh, control click on this defense die, I will see all six faces of the die. And I see that I have two bones, three ones, and a two. Uh, I can left click to change or simply right click or hit the escape key on the keyboard. Uh, you can see here, if you don't want to change, if you want to simply close this little window, you can right click it or hit the escape key on the keyboard and that will make that window go away. Again, always hover over a box in question. Normally you'll get a, a tooltip reminding you of what you can click and how you can click to uh, get uh, to, to get uh, different results. Now, as long as I'm up in this corner of the of the player mat, let me mention that you can click on this uh, 
buff box here and check it, and that will show you the uh, buff values or adjustment values for each one of these stats. Now, uh, in the case of uh, buff health, for example, you might want to increase this value. Let's say some effect gives you plus three buff health. I can right-click that box three times and uh, get a plus three on my uh, health. That's sort of like a buff health. So if I, as I get hurt, the program now will automatically, if I, if I decide to reduce my health by left-clicking on my health box up here, uh, you'll see that it takes away from buff health first, and then my health will start to decrease as I continue to click. Uh, buff boxes can also be used for gen general uh, adjustments. Let's say a program, uh, let's say a, a, a particular encounter in a game s uh, says that you can't roll any defensive dice. Well, I could uh, go into the buff box for defense and put in, let's say, a minus three or any large minus number, that will uh, prevent that will prevent me, and I don't think it's going to work here because I'm not in the middle of a battle, but if I was and I clicked roll, I would get a warning saying, wait a minute, you're trying to roll a defensive die, yet you are not permitted to roll defensive dice. Uh, we'll see that later on when we're... Uh, when I'm discussing the battle map and uh, rolling dice for dexterity and so forth and so on. But as I'm uh, back to my original point, these are not only buff boxes when they're positive, but they can be used as negative adjustment values. For example, I could uh, negate this box to, uh, to indicate that, say, some of my dice are broken, some of my attack dice are broken, and, and I can't roll them any longer, in the case of the break skill, for instance. Uh, again, we'll talk about that more as we go. Uh, I also have a little button here that says note. If you click that, you can kind of remind yourself as to what you were trying to do or what you, uh, any kind of reminder that you, uh, that you want to uh, uh, use to refresh your memory about perhaps your strategy or what you're trying to do with any one particular gear lock. Uh, the, uh, uh, particularly if you're playing a game involving multiple gear locks, you might very easily forget, oh, what the heck did I want to do with patches, or what was my game plan here? Well, this, this little note feature allows you to just kind of, uh, oh, I don't know, don't forget to heal, whatever the case may be, and then hit the Enter key or click the message at the top of the screen, to tell the program that you're done editing the reminder. The reminders are specific to the gear lock. So if I go over to Boomer here, of course, he doesn't have a reminder. But if I come back to Patches, ah, there's the reminder. I see it. Uh, the clear button, the note button now changes into a clear button when I don't need that reminder any longer, and I can just simply get rid of it. Uh, the box will go, and the box will go away uh, on its own uh, for example, if I click away and come back to patches, now the box is gone. To summarize, you uh, select gear locks uh, up in here. If you're playing with two or more gear locks, you right-click on a stat to increase it, left-click on a stat to decrease it. Uh, if you need to roll some dice down here in the dexterity area, left-click on an, this attack die to, get, uh, to add one attack die to your roll, right-click to add two attack dice to your roll, left click to add one defensive die to your roll, right click to add another two. And then finally, uh, right click on any of these to delete those dice. Okay, uh, thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.